Taking action for you. This morning on TV20 Detroit starts right now. Welcome to another edition of Pulse Beat with Greg Dunmore. We like to underscore in this show the importance of dreams coming true, and there's no place that symbolizes the reality of dreams coming true more so than Motown. And we're standing in front of the Motown Museum in Detroit on West Grand Boulevard, where we know all roads lead back to Motown. And two artists that symbolize dreams coming true, Motown's iconic arranger Paul Reiser and the musical magnificence of vocalist Mesa. Stay tuned. Are you sure? Are you ready for Mesa? Yeah. All right. So they ready. Oh, God, I can't. Thank you. Thank you, babe. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> This old song is about a man that I wanted that I couldn't have. <laughs> An ex-friend of mine introduced me to this man over the phone, and I spoke to him for seven weeks. Got all excited and was going to Las Vegas to meet him and found out the day I was leaving that he was married. Child. Mm, mm, mm. But instead of getting depressed and eating more cookies, I decided to write a song. They played it so much on the radio, I made a lot of money and bought myself this diamond right here. Sure did. This one right here. Take over my mind. I surrender to the rush of your time. You're making me weak, so incredible, your control over me. I can't resist no matter how I've tried. Your love has got me hypnotized. Oh, closer and closer. Mesa, Detroit has had a love affair with you for a very long time, but of course the city gets older and you get younger. But if somebody was to ask you, what is this love affair that you and Detroit have had and can you kind of let us know maybe where it stems from? It stems from the first time I came here with Incognito back in 1992, 93. What we got here? One of the first shows we did here uh, was at the Fox, I believe. And just the reaction from the audience was amazing. Uh, with the love of Incognito and, and for me to come here and sing Deep Waters here in, in, in the States, and especially in Detroit. Because um, it was a big deal for Incognito to come here. We knew that this was the music mecca. And so when you come to those kind of places, you want to make sure that you do the, your best because you want the people to love you, especially here. And so that's why uh, it was so special. And now Detroit for the last 33 years has been, it's been my second home. Because they, everybody here just treats me like a princess. Wow. Mm -hmm. With good reason. Now, I interviewed Nancy Wilson and she said, and I called her a jazz singer, she says, well, I don't consider myself to be a jazz singer. And she said, they put this jazz on me. My love has no beginning, my love has no end. No front or back. My love won't bend, I'm in the middle. 
lost in a spin Loving you Loving you And you don't know, you don't know, you don't know, you don't know. I know that your son's name is Jazz, so I know you have this jazz connection. But how do you define yourself as a vocalist? I'm a jazz, funk, and soul singer. That's how I think. Um, I've always wanted to do that. That's what my my passion was from a little girl, listening to Shaka Khan and Rufus and, and you know all those bands back in the day. I knew that that's what I wanted to sing. I wanted to have the variation of, of and the choice to sing all three and to put them together is the way I, I want it to be. Now this show that you're doing this evening is sort of a narrative, I was told, from mm -hmm. point A to point B to yeah. point C. So I'm going to ask you just briefly to say point A will be and then where are we right now in terms of where the, I'm going to call you the legendary Macy is right now. Uh, well, I started out singing background for Stevie Wonder. Um, that was my first professional gig after leaving me. For the last 33 years, I've been coming to Detroit. A long time, isn't it? Both of y'all with little babies there. Uh-huh. Back in 1990, what, 91? On my last year at Morgan State University, Stevie Wonder came to town with one of my best friends. She was already singing background for him, and she asked him if I could audition. So I auditioned that day and passed the audition, but I asked Stevie if I could finish my degree. I had one year left. All of my friends thought I was crazy as hell. They was like, how are you going to tell Stevie Wonder what you're going to do? But he was so sweet about it. He said, yeah, Mason, come out a year next year. I'll have something for you to do. So the next year when I graduated, I joined Wonder Love. Now can't reveal the mystery of tomorrow. first professional gig was singing background on the song These Three Words from the Spike Lee movie, Jungle Fever. But one of those songs on that album, that soundtrack album, kind of jumped in my heart during the pandemic. <laughs> Where my kitchen karaoke family? Oh, there you go. Well, one of y'all kitchen karaoke brothers tried to step to a sister during the pandemic, and uh, I spoke to this man for six months on the phone, day in and day out. He met my family over the phone. I met his family over the phone. We were waiting for the vaccine so we could go on our first date. Well, the vaccine happened, but they did not. And it kind of made me a little sad, because you know, up in that point, I had been by myself about 10 years at that time. So I was ready to give somebody a chance, and he messed the thing up. Yeah, wait. So I figured, you know, the next man that steps to me, I want him to make sure he's sure. So I recorded this song.
music's ways and your lips are so divine and you say you know that you're falling in love let's be mature make sure The excitement is going to continue. Stay tuned. You're watching PulseBeat.tv. What's happening in entertainment with Greg Dunmore of PulseBeat.tv. Don't you just love Mesa? And guess what? We love her even more because she gave us a gift bag. Music for your soul. Let's see what's in it. Ooh, a, a CD. Music for your soul. And something else. Ooh, something that's going to make your car smell really great. Something scented with her picture. And more Mesa. Mm, love you, Mesa. Don't you stop it. Don't you stop it. Stop the music. Really want to stop. On February 29th at the Soundboard, Mace is going to do what she does best, and she is a superlative artist. So you have to make a point to be at the Soundboard on February 29th. We love Mace. My music is uh, something I, I, I work very hard at making sure that it's music that will last for a long time. Uh, I want to make sure that generations can come back to my music and appreciate it. So I work very hard at that. I don't do gimmicks and I don't try to, you know, try to be somebody I'm not. So I just always stay true to who I'm, true to myself. And I think that's why I've had this longevity so long. Can you tell us something that is upcoming that we love our scoop, so can you say something maybe that our audience will be among the first to hear something that's in the works or something yeah. that, let us know what that might be or what that is. Well, um, as soon as I get the blessing from her estate, I'm doing a, a Phyllis Hyman tribute album. And I'm really excited about it. We're going to do it full on with orchestra and the first show will be with orchestra, hopefully from Philadelphia or Pittsburgh. And we'll see where we can go with that. I think I just want an honest, loving tribute to her about her music. No drama, no going deep into her past and to her life, into her personal life. We're not doing that. It's all about the music and the love for Phyllis Hyman's voice and her legacy. Now, you are an international name. We know you live sometime in London and incognito. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that the European audience is compared to the American audience? Is there a big difference? Is there a Josephine Baker thing that went on in London that didn't happen here or what? Um, I, I think in the beginning it was. Um, in the beginning when I started with Incognito, it was all about, you know, we were at the same time as the Millie the Milli phrase, a phase and all that stuff. That's what was going on then. But, uh, and I kind of had a hard time um, with that. There was, a, the, well, I was told that the reason why we didn't do a video for Deep Waters is because they didn't think I had the right look. And so therefore we had to deal with that kind of stuff, even though the song is now a big hit without me doing a video, but I was doing a video. So um, that was the early part of my career, living through that. Um, but somehow surviving it and getting to the point where in Europe, they didn't care what you looked like. They didn't care, they just wanted the music. They loved the soul of the music. And um, that's, what, what, that's what sustained the music back then. So now, um, in this country, I think we're getting back to that now. I think a lot of people, uh, because of the advent of social media, you're able to, to discover real people who are doing soulful music and not trying to just be like everybody else. So is there a song that you would hope would be or that you consider to be your signature song, whether we consider it to be your signature <laughs> song or not? It's definitely Deep Waters. That's the song that everybody knows me by and that has sustained my career this whole time for three decades uh, and still people still love to hear it so that means that it's, it's, it should be Thomas at this point and I hope it will be. I saw the signs, I read the book I should have had a second look Cause boy you caught me dreaming And there were times you'd come around And we'd agree 
just to be friends. Tell me who was who. On February 29th at the Soundboard, Mace is going to do what she does best, and she is a superlative artist. So you have to make a point to be at the Soundboard on February 29th. We love Mesa. And we'd agree just to be friends. Tell me who was who. Beat.tv. If you like what we're doing, please tell a friend. Or if you want to see what we've done again, go to postbeatglobal.com. That's P U L S E B E A T G L O B A L dot com. You can also go to our Postbeat TV YouTube channel and you can revisit what we're doing. And once again, you can tell everybody that we're doing something that is so exciting that they wouldn't want to miss it. Remember postbeatglobal.com or the YouTube channel Postbeat TV. Thanks for telling the world about us. What happened to your business idea you've been dreaming about? Build Institute offers business and project planning classes for aspiring and established entrepreneurs. We'll help you launch and test your concept, provide access to capital funding, and provide one-on-one -on -one coaching and mentoring. So don't just dream about starting your business, build it with Build Institute. Classes begin February 1st. To register and for more information, visit us at www.buildinstitute.org. This is a Pulse Beat Black History Month moment. There was trouble, big trouble, down beneath the waves of Lake Erie in 1960. A natural gas pocket exploded 120 feet below during work on Cleveland's newest waterworks tunnel. There were twisted conduit pipes and rubble everywhere along the torn up railroad tracks inside the 10 foot wide underwater artery. The noxious fumes were suffocating and through the smoke and dust, 11 tunnel workers now lay dead. The Cleveland police were desperate to save the lives of the workers that remained in the tunnel. After sending two rescue parties into the tunnel to search for survivors with no results, they finally turned to Garrett A. Morgan knowing about a gas mask that he had patented two years before. Morgan alerted and hustled his brother Frank to his side. Together they threw a bunch of gas masks in their car and in their pajamas drove down to the lakefront. Garrett and his brother Frank, utilizing what they were then promoting as the National Safety Hood and Smoke Protector, descended into the tunnel, now strewn with dead bodies, and managed to save eight lives. The Cleveland police and others at the site applauded the efforts of the inventor and his brother. The next day, the foreman and members of his crew were given a big cash bonus, along with medals, and were recognized in reports from the New York Times, the Los Angeles Times, and the Chicago Tribune. However, as Sandra Morgan reports, her grandfather was not mentioned or recognized as having taken any significant part in salvaging the lives until decades later. But the hoodie, used to rescue lives during the Cleveland Waterworks tragedy, would later be cited by Scientific American and honored by the National Museum of African American History. This has been a post beat Black History Month moment. Post beat. Some names are really worthy of being household names, and there is no name more worthy than being a household name than the magnificent Motown arranger, Mr. Paul Rising. Happy birthday, Paul! Oh, 
shock. Honest to God. First time in my life I've had a, a real party. A real party. Yeah. It is often said, will there be another Stevie Wonder? Will there be? Who will be the next Stevie Wonder? Will be there? Uh, who will be the next Michael Jackson? Who will be the next Marvin Gaye? The question is, will there ever be another Paul Reiser? Well, my son and name. <laughs> okay, but that's all. God created us as as, as unique as his uh, fingerprints. You know, everybody. The gifts, the spiritual gifts, are all unique and. Uh, I think there's be, there'll never be another Stevie, never be another Marvin, and never be another me. Okay, never. Which is, uh, we have to, we have to find our spiritual great gifts. Some people go through life and never discover their gifts, but we all have them. God gives every single of His children, every single one, a spiritual gift. But we have to be. In, in, uh, introspective and, and discerning enough to know when to hold them and when to fold them, as the, as the gambler said. You know? There was no greater arranger in the history of Motown than Paul Reiser. Paul Reiser is a Grammy winning arranger, so he has his Grammys for it, so everyone knows that he is the best of the best. He just did um, Kim, the singer Kim, he just did some new songs on Kim's new album, so he's still working, he's still sought after. He's been doing stuff with Big Sean and things like that, so he's sought after. Everyone knows that Paul Reiser is that deal, and like I said, I'm just so excited that he's getting his flowers. What makes him historical is that he being a part of the Motown sound and being a very integral part of what gave the Motown sound that style, you know. Um, you know, strings, horns, orchestration, arrangements. I've got so much honey, the bees in the me. Uh, you know, those things and also writing amazing songs such as like, you know, what becomes of the brokenhearted, and you know, I don't know why I love you. Working with Stevie and people like that. Um, what makes him relevant is because even after Motown, he was working with, you know, acts like Ashford and Simpson. Now it's solid, solid as a rock. He's still Stevie Wonder. We just did Kim, uh, Kim's new record, um, "Live Out Your Love," and I can't remember the next one. Um, in the actual Motown studio, so he's still he's still working. And plus, me as an arranger and being his copyist, I'm still working. So as long as as I've got breath in my body, I'm carrying on the legacy of Paul Reiser as best as possible. You know, of course, you got you know the break in my girl, but which is you know that's a part that was written by Paul. Best people that I've met in my life, and one he's one of great musicians. A lot of people don't know how great a musician he was. They know he's a great arranger. Paul was an excellent musician, so we met many years ago in high school. So uh, all I can say is Paul is the best. He probably is the most prolific arranger of anybody in history. Certainly, you know, during the Motown years and in many of the wonderful music that we continue to listen to. You know, he had a big part in all of that. So, you know, when you st still have a living legend with you, you got to acknowledge that. That's what he is. Well, as an arranger, I think sometimes singers don't really understand the importance of an arranger. I had the opportunity to sing and pay tribute to Paul Reiser a couple years ago, and I sang Diana Ross uh, and the Supremes' um, Ain't No Mountain High Enough. arranged by Paul, so let me say that. And to hear his placement of the strings, of the instrumentation, where the vocals should go, um, when you go high, when you go low, all of those things are much more appreciated to me as a vocalist when you have to sing what has been manifested by the actual arranger. I actually sing background with Kim as well, and I've seen him execute the string arrangements for Kim, some of Kim's music. 
So um, Paul is brilliant. He's absolutely brilliant. Pulse of a new generation. Pulse beat.